Hello, welcome. Now this is the third video that I've done on Synapse Link for Dataverse. So yeah, there's a few things that I've wanted to you know dig into and understand about what's happening when data is being synchronized from you know Dynamics 365 into the data lake and being surfaced in Synapse Analytics. So I've got two videos. The first one is the getting started. The second one, we're diving into one of the advanced features, which is the append only model. Really, really useful for ETL and data warehousing scenarios. It's got you know, great points in time functionality there. And we kind of went through that. This video, I wanted to look at the, what they call snapshot tables in Synapse Link. So these are created automatically as part of the configuration, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump into Synapse and show the tables first before we go back to, to Dynamics. So I'm in my Synapse that I've set up specifically for Dynamics. And if I have a look at the lake database that is being synchronized to from Dynamics, you can basically see that for every table, I've got another table that says partitioned. Now, those tables will appear once you have data in a, in a source table and you've changed that data as well. Now you can see that I've got account, I've got one for, uh, I've got partition for account, campaign, contacts. We'll concentrate on contact because that's what we've done for the previous videos. But as you can see, I got a partition table. Uh, ignore all of the metadata tables. That's uh, that's more about uh, some of the the metadata that's stored within Dynamics, like relationships between entities. Really useful stuff there. They don't get partitioned. Now, one of the main reasons why these tables get partitioned is because I'd say the first table or the actual table. That's what they call the near real time. Now, in the first video, I kind of debated what near real time meant. But suffice to say that when data gets updated in Dynamics, at some point, hopefully as soon as possible, it appears in the data lake and available for querying in Synapse. So that will be in those tables that are named the same as the tables in the source. There's a problem with those tables, though. When data is being written to the files, there is a chance that if you read the data at the same time, if you do a select query using serverless SQL pools or Spark pools, it's going to error and say, you can't read the file because it's currently being written to. OK. So what actually happens is you've got a second table, a partition table. Now this, the frequency of the updates on these tables is far less. So Microsoft give us sort of a vague hour in terms of when the, 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 when the data will be available in those partition tables. However, what it means is that there's far less likelihood of locking. There's far less likelihood of a clash when you try and read the data and it's being written to. So what I want to do, just dive into the table and look at the partition table and just see the differences. So if I do a select and I'm going to count from that contact table, uh, we're going to get about 15 rows back. <laughs> there we go. Honestly, I, OK, I couldn't have planned that better <laughs> um, if I tried. <laughs> Let's try again. I've got 15 rows in uh, in that table. I've actually got 12 contacts in Dynamics, but I've enabled append only, which doesn't delete anything. So I've actually got more in there. Now, if I go into the contact partitioned and run that, I've got 15 rows, right? I haven't changed anything in Dynamics for a couple of days. Now, one of the things I want to look at is the metadata of that table. OK, so I've got a query here that goes and pulls out the metadata for the tables, which includes the location and the, the data source type. So we're going to hide that 
that side menu. So for the contact table, it's a CSV. And if I just expand that out, then we can see that it's pointing to a, loca a location in the data lake in the contact folder. So any files, any CSV files within that folder are going to be read by serverless SQL pools. And they're the files that are being written to. But there's no partitioned table here. That is not, the metadata is not being replicated into serverless SQL pools. So what I can do is switch to Spark pool. So I'm going to go over here. And here's one that I spun up earlier. And we can just query the data like we did in serverless SQL pools. So I'm going to do a select query first over that data and pull in it from the, the contact partition table. And well, there we go. I've got my data. So let's just bring that up. OK, so there's my 15 rows of data. But now I do have access to metadata using uh, Spark, because ultimately Synapse Link under the hood it's creating tables in the lake database. What's interesting, if we scroll down, we've got the schema of the table. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll down through the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of columns. That's why Synapse Link, when you link it into a Synapse workspace, is so useful because it just creates the schema for you. But as we can see, if we go down, here we go, we get to some metadata for the table. So there we go, contact partitioned. We've got, well, created by Spark 2.2 or prior. So that's interesting. Okay. And then we've got some partition details as well. So we've got partition information. So the created on partition. So that is the year and the month or possibly the year whatever you've set as the partition scheme in the Synapse Link configuration screen. But as you can see, we've got our metadata here that's you know, visible to, uh, to Spark. If we have a look at the folder where the data is actually stored, so if we go into the data lake, I'm already in the contact table. Let's go back actually. Right, there we go. So there's the underlying folders and files that to underpin the uh, the dynamics data that's been synchronized. If I go into contact, then you can see, well, there's my CSV files for my real time table. But I've got the snapshot folder as well. If I go into that snapshot folder, I've got some CSVs and I've got some folders. Now, in my testing, it's the CSVs in the folders. So if we go in here, and there we go, look, there's the partitioned CSV columns. These are the folders and files that are being selected when you query the data. Okay, I know this because if I delete these files, it's not available. So I'm actually going to do that now. I'm being a bit naughty, but let's just see. So I'm going to go back into Snapshot. I'll go into this table and I'm just going to delete this file. Just get rid of it. I've got backups of these files. OK, if I go back in and query, I've only got 11 rows now in that table. OK. So when you go into the data lake and go into that snapshot directory, there's going to be folders. Those folders are where the CSVs are being written to. Now, as you change data, more folders and more CSVs are going to be created, which store like the previous snapshot version of the files. Now, to date, there's no way of actually querying those files using serverless SQL pools or Spark directly from this table. So the contact partition table, it doesn't have any other columns or metadata that you can use to say, well, actually, why don't you show me the data from a previous snapshot? It doesn't really have that ability. It just stores the snapshotted data in the data lake. 
So if you wanted to, you could cast some structure over that and query. But the important thing is that when we're talking about latency between the near real time tables and these, these snapshot tables, even though they're called partitioned tables, is that when you change the data in dynamics, at some point, as near real time, near real time as possible, it's going to be available in the base table. But periodically, those changes are going to be batched up and sent over to the snapshot tables. So it's if you've got ETL processes where you're picking up data, then using the snapshot tables, using the partition tables is going to be more useful because it's a reduced chance of any locking. If you've got some Power BI reports, let's say, that are, well, let's say they're plugged directly into these tables. Okay, you're not doing any form of transformation. If you do have Power BI plugged in directly to these tables and you hit refresh and it fails and you hit refresh and it works again because there's been a locking, that might not be a problem for you. Um, but certainly I think for ETL scenarios using the snapshot tables, there's going to be far, far less risk of any locking taking place when you try and read those tables. Okay. So I hope that's been useful. As I said, there were a couple of previous videos in the series. The first one is the getting started where we go through the process of setting up Synapse Link and changing and adding some data in, uh, in Dynamics, in Dynamics 365 sales. And then we just see how that data gets synchronized into Synapse. So once again, I hope you've enjoyed it. If you're not subscribed yet, then please consider subscribing. I've got some more content coming around Synapse, but we're gonna to start to throw some Power BI into the mix as well. So please join me then, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.